Hey friend, Roger Christofferson here. Um, doing something a little different today. I have there's nothing uh, planned for this at all, but I've been over the past couple days here been watching a bunch of videos of the uh, first Pantera performance. Um, this is the they're kind of calling it a reunion, but I think everybody knows it's not really a reunion. It's you know half Pantera, but it's never gonna be Pantera you know, really without the uh, Abbott brothers in it. But I've been watching a bunch of videos, just interested to hear what it sounded like. I mean, curiosity. Um, I was a Pantera fan, you know, back when they were in their heyday. I mean, I was a little bit late to the game. I didn't uh, really, you know, know who they were until, you know, Cowboys from Hell was being played on you know, MTV constantly. It was always on Headbangers Ball. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, from that point on, their earlier stuff didn't, of course, they were quite different back in the earlier days. I mean, their style completely changed, but, um, you know, and followed them from that point on. Like, one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorites from them is Far Beyond Driven. I know that was a little bit divisive for some people, but that's, uh, you know, the kind of stuff I really like. To, I mean, Dimebag came up with some awesome riffs, and his style of lead playing was uh, very unique to himself, and just seemed like a great guy, him and his... And his brother Vinny there just seemed like uh, great guys. Um, never really got into the damage plan or hell yeah too much, but uh, I definitely liked Pantera. So, <clears throat> um, so I, I was curious. And Zach, I think, is a great player. Love Zach. I mean, in Anthrax, got Charlie Benante playing drums with him now. Um, fans of all those guys. So, you know, I, I know there's a lot of controversy going around around about this, and you know, it's, I've seen a lot of the stuff there. People are saying. But one thing I, I realized when I was watching this, because I was just interested in hearing how they sounded, not really thinking too much other than that, but what I noticed was the people in the crowd were absolutely just loving it. And they had a picture of uh, Vinny and Dime on the, the drum heads, and Charlie's drum set there. And, you know, the energy from that crowd made me realize it's more, it's not about this or who's playing the music at this point, it's the music is still alive. They're out there keeping the music alive. And people are celebrating. It's actually getting me kind of like emotional thinking about it. It's like they're keeping the music alive. So you're uh, celebrating the lives of these two awesome people. So um, I just thought that overall, maybe that's what we should be looking at. Not who it is up there playing the, the music and you know, if it's a money grab, which I'm sure that there's people obviously making money off of this. Um, what your feelings of, you know, Phil are, he's had some controversial stuff going on. Um, I actually forgot to mention, you know, his band that uh, he had going on there uh, with a uh, corrosion of conformity guitarist. Uh, it was man, I draw, down me. I was drawing a blank there. Um, I really like that band too. I like that style of music and uh, really dug them and you know Rex with them for a while and Rex has done some other stuff too. So, um, but anyway, yeah, just the effect that they somehow are out there keeping the music of Vinny and Dime alive is like cool. I mean, and we all know that Zach was like super great friends with with Dime and Dime actually played on an Anthrax record. Um, you know, they were just, they were friends before all this, so it's, I guess it's really cool, the people that they chose to go out there and do this. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of my thoughts on it. I mean, if they're out there, and their main goal among the band members, especially the ones filling in, is to keep their friends' music alive, and we can go out there and celebrate what these guys accomplished instead of just letting it die and not listening to their music anymore, not out there enjoying it. I mean, come on, you got to... Thousands of people coming together to celebrate the music these guys made. Um, I guess in the end, that's probably the most important thing. Personal feelings aside about who's in the band or who isn't, I guess. I mean, obviously, there's never going to be a reunion. And it looked like Zach did his best to play um, you know, Dime's solos um, the way you know, Dime played them, although nobody can do that. I mean, especially when you have a style that's so unique to uh, Zach himself, he's got a style, but he purposely developed that way. It, it's ingrained in him, so I mean, you got those pinched harmonics and stuff that it just naturally come out of him, I'm sure it's hard to get away from that. And, uh, you know, uh, Dime just had some weird style of uh, 
playing sometimes. I don't even know how you could replicate. I don't even know how he replicated it himself sometimes, but he was just an amazing player. And Vinny, of course, is amazing. A drummer, too. And he just, I mean, they were just amazing musicians, amazing people. So, anyway, just a quick thought on that. I don't want to keep this too long. Um, yeah, feel free to share your thoughts and uh, what you think about the whole thing down below. Um, you know, hopefully, without, you know, being too <laughs> aggressive in your comments. But anyway, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. And see you in the next one. See you.